So here we are in Lightroom, and this is the image that I want to be able to print pretty large. In fact, I'm thinking this is probably going to be a 60 inch, at least a 48 inch print, maybe even a 60 inch print. I haven't decided yet. And when I'm going to have a print that big and I'm going to spend that kind of money, I want the color to be as good as possible. In fact, I want it to be as close to perfect as possible. Now, there's other pieces to this equation. My monitor is calibrated which is very important. I have a color checker that I know what the, gray, the white balance is. And I have custom printer profiles for my papers. However, I'm sending this one out to a lab, so I need to make sure that on my calibrated screen, it looks as perfect as possible. So we're in Lightroom right now, and could I adjust color here? I could. I could go to um, the color, color grading down here. Uh, which is still a, a term that I hate. <laughs> and I've also got color mixer here. I've got the mixer if I wanted to adjust colors. And what I could do is go to this little adjusted, uh, the adjustment pointer here, click on the clouds and drag it up and down and see if it gives me a color I want. And that's actually not terrible. But the problem is the entire sky color is off. Why is that? Well, this image has multiple color temperatures in it. We've got the the setting sun reflecting off the red rocks, which is reflecting down into the ground. And that apparently threw off the camera's auto white balance and made the color back here go a little too cyan. For really basic, subtle, or minor adjustments, Lightroom is fine. However, this is going to be a big print and it's going to cost me some money. So I'm going to send this into Photoshop. Let's do that. Command or Control E to send it into Photoshop. So here's the image in Photoshop, and again, it, it, it looks great. In fact, we can zoom into 100% and see that the, the sharpness is just outstanding all the way around, right from my feet all the way out to the tops of the monuments. This, by the way, is in Valley of the Gods near Mexican Hat, Utah. I love this place, and the light is just so stunningly beautiful. But, as I mentioned, the color of the sky is off. So here's what we're going to do. Select, oh, let me get a, a layer that's got the image on it. Let's do select sky. All right, there's our sky selection. And what I want to do is to do a color balance adjustment on this. You can see in my layers panel, I've already played around with this. I want to start again for you. So I come down to the adjustment layers right here, the half black and white circle and choose color balance. So with the color balance sliders up here, I prefer to start in mid-tones. And what I'll do is I'll move them back and forth a little bit. And to make it easier, I'm going to zoom in where I'm seeing a lot of the sky. So let's add a little cyan. Well, now I know cyan's not going to work. It's already looking too cyan. Come over now. If I come over there, I'm making them red. So it's going to be somewhere in between there. It's going to be sort of a subtle adjustment. Oh, maybe six or so or eight. Yeah, eight looks pretty good. Magenta, let's try. Do we go green? Oh, God, no. Oh, too much magenta. Just a little bit. Let's go, oh, I don't know. We'll go, we'll go a little minus. Just a little bit here. No, we'll do about five. And then on yellow, does, does it need yellow? Well, that makes it too pale yellow. That makes it really blue. Maybe a very little bit to the minus side. It is sunset, so it would be a little bit yellower. Now let's move up to highlights. Let's see for highlights. We'll do again. Red? Oh, no. Cyan? No. You know, when, when nothing seems, when not, the slider doesn't make it better in either direction, um, leave it alone. However, I'm going to get a little subjective here as well. This is a sunset, so I'm going to add just a smidge of red to it. We'll just go sort of a plus two there. On the magenta green, let's try that. Magenta? Oh, no. Green? Oh, uh, a very little bit, maybe. There we go. Something like a, a plus five or so. And then on yellow. Yellow, more yellow, more blue, yellow, blue. Actually, I think it needs a little bit of blue. So we're going to add a little blue. Well, maybe not. <laughs> maybe not. You know, let's, uh, let's go yellow. Again, this part is somewhat subjective. In fact, I'm going to go see the entire screen. And I'm going to toggle the eyeball off on this to see where we are. Yeah, we've got a cut. We've got that. The, it's starting to look a lot better. The clouds, anyway, look a lot better. All right, so let's go to the shadows and we'll do the same thing. We'll add some red. No, yeah, actually, yeah, the cyan red one looks 
pretty well balanced. Maybe we can, I'll add a little bit of warmth. I'm kind of liking the warmth over in here. Magenta green. Ma green, no. Magenta, no. Actually, neither of those really seems to make an improvement. So again, when that happens, let's see. Actually, a, just a couple of points, three or four of green works. And then yellow, blue. Yellow, blue. Yellow does not work now. Let's go to a little bit more blue in those shadows. And I think that looks good. So let's turn this on and off. And look at the difference in the sky. Let's zoom in a little bit. There's our after. There's the before. And we're just affecting the, the uh, sky. Actually, I'm really happy with that. That looks great. And again, I'm working on a calibrated monitor. So I know it's showing me the colors the best of its ability. Now we're going to invert that and we're going to do the foreground. So let's try that. And to do that, I'm going to create another color balance adjustment. Now you see in the mask, it doesn't have anything. What I'm going to do is hold down the alt key, drag the mask from the previous one, which is wrong. If I hold down the alt and click on that, it's showing me the sky is what's in white. That's what would be, what would be edited. If I hit command or control I, it inverts it. So now we're just work, walking, walking, we're just working on the foreground. You can see, because if I make a slider, you can see only the, the foreground's going nuts. So let's do the same thing for the foreground. And I'm thinking the rocks look pretty good. The, the grass in the front might be a little bit off. Let's just, maybe it's a little too yellow. I'm not sure. Let's find out. And that's the beauty of doing it this way, because you don't have to guess. Just look at it. So I'll add some red. Add some cyan, red cyan. You know what? It needs some cyan. Now, I'm not concerned about the rocks in the background. I'm just looking at the grass. I can mask this out after we're done. So I think it needs a little bit of cyan in the foreground. We'll do magenta green, magenta green, magenta green. Yeah, it leads a little magenta. So we'll bring the magenta over a little bit. And then yellow, blue. Needs some blue. And there we go. It was a little bit too yellow, so the blue will counteract that a little bit. Now let's go to highlights again. Cyan. Mag cyan red. Cyan red. Uh, I don't like either of them. I'm going to leave it alone. Since it seems doesn't, no slider seems to move. It minus one isn't going to really do anything. Magenta green. Magenta green. Magenta green. Oh, don't like that either. We're going to leave that one alone as well yellow blue ah it, to see it did need some more blue in the highlights though so we'll add a little blue and finally let's do the shadows so there we go cyan red it needed cyan in the shadows and you can see it's taken away somewhat of the glowy yellow you could go with that if you felt that was what it needed cyan let's see magenta green magenta green a very little bit of green to take out a little of the red and then yellow, which we know isn't going to work, and blue. Yellow, blue, just a little bit of blue. Now let's turn the foreground on and off. And you can see, now again, looking at the grass, I think the grass looks better. It's taking away some of the glow of the rocks, and the rocks do glow at sunset like that. Let's see. Yeah, I do want the, the glow of the rocks back, so I'm going to hit Command-0 to see the whole image. And if I hit hold down the alt key and click on it you can see there is uh, the white is the part that is getting the image now i could just leave the image on click on the mask put x in the foreground get a nice big brush i'm going to get a nice big brush at a hundred percent i'm not going to mess around and what i'm going to do i'm going to make it a little smaller on the screen just so i can see everything get my brush back and I'm going to paint it 100% and I'm just going to go over the rock formations. And at the part where there's the interface, I'm going to bring down the opacity. I'm going to make it though 70%. So I'm just going to hit 7 on the keyboard. Click in between, hold down the shift key and click again, and that drags a straight line across. Now, if we hold down alt, now you can see, and I can see the spots that I need to fix a little more, but having that kind of gradual transition is not a bad thing. In fact, it's a good thing. In fact, let's just cut right back to zero. So now when we turn this one on and off, you can see 
all that's really being affected is the grasses. The grasses have had a little of their glow taken away, but what that's doing is it's helping the eye again get more to the formations. So let's see the before and after. I'll hide both of these. There's what we started with, and there's what we ended with. And in, to my eye, that's the way I remember this place. And there we can see it full screen. That is now ready for a print. So how do I send this out to my lab? Well, most of your labs are going to want, believe it or not, if you're having photographic prints done, they want an sRGB JPEG or a TIFF. As I look at this image, I love the color balance of it. I do believe, though, I've taken a little too much uh, saturation out. So let's go ahead and add that back in. I'm going to go to Adjustment Layers go to use saturation and just put a little bit saturation I think 10 points or so should do it oh yeah that looks spectacular so yes it added some life back to the foreground really makes the monuments pop doesn't affect the sky all that much really just barely and again if we turn off the before and the after the color balance is so much better great so there we go there's our final image I'll take a look at it full screen. Yeah, there's the final. And I think that's what needed. Just a little bit of saturation to bring it back to life. I now have an image that is ready to go to the lab. I can now export this, send it off to the lab, and be sure that this is what's going to come back. A lot more to follow on this, but it gives you a sense of how you can fine-tune color before you send out to spend a lot of money on a print from a lab. More to follow. Thanks for joining me, and I'll see you online again soon. Bye-bye.